CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet, and today we're going to learn how to make the easiest wreath ever, um, an ornament for your tree. So I've got a lot of wreath um, videos on my channel, um, and there's a lot everywhere, but I really wanted to do something that was literally beginner friendly. Like you just started crocheting and you want to make some ornaments for your tree. So that's what this is about. It's super easy. Of course, people who aren't beginners um, might want to make this. It really is beautiful and simple and pretty. So yeah, I think it'll be great fun for everyone. The first thing I want to say, though, is please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notify me bell below. Um, that really helps so much when you do that, and then you can get notified for my future videos. Um, but sharing also helps a whole bunch. So if you can share to friends or family that love to crochet or to your crochet groups, that really helps more than anything, and I appreciate it so much. This channel has experienced so much growth over this last year with over 20,000 subscribers, and I just can't thank you enough for your support. It really means a whole lot, okay? So I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season, whatever holiday you celebrate, or if you celebrate none at all, I just hope you're enjoying this time. Okay, so let's get into our materials. Now realize that when we get into these materials, you don't have to use everything that I'm using. You can repurpose stuff in your house, you can try different things, you know, you can make this craft your own. But I am gonna tell you what I used, and you're definitely gonna need a pair of scissors. I used a 5.5 um, millimeter hook, um, but I did use two different kinds of yarn here. So this is a Red Heart white yarn, and this is a, um, uh, I can't remember, I, I think this is a Dollar Tree yarn, a gray Dollar Tree yarn. But this is thinner than this yarn. So you can tell the difference. Even though I use the same hook, this is a thinner, smaller yarn. And so it made a much smaller ornament. So remember too, if you go up in your size for ornament, um, I mean for your hook, um, it's going to make your ornament bigger. If you go down, it's going to make it smaller. And that's the same for the yarn. If you use a bigger yarn, it's going to make it bigger. If you use a smaller yarn, it's going to make it smaller. So just keep that in mind. I actually preferred this thicker um Red Heart yarn for this. I thought it turned out, I like the, I like it a little bit bigger. Not to say that this isn't pretty, it is, but I just thought that this was better for me. So you choose whichever yarn that you want. Um, you will need a darning needle as well. Um, I use twine for this, jute twine that you can get off Amazon. I'll leave it in the description box below. Um, but I, I've been using this for other crafts as well, so I had some. But when I use the jute twine, please keep in mind that if you do not have this, you can use yarn. You do not have to use this, okay? You can definitely use yarn. You could use a brown yarn. You could use the same color yarn that's going along with your ornament, and you'll see how you use that when I pull it in, okay? So definitely you can use yarn instead of that. And I have beads here up at the top. I got this, and if you, if you watch a lot of my videos, you've seen this in another video. I found this really cool box of wooden beads at Walmart for like five bucks. So I was really excited about it because they're just so natural looking. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, I found these at Walmart. And again, I'll put this in the description box below, but you could use anything you wanted to. You could make little yarn baubles for the top of this. You could use old buttons. Um, and if you, um, or if you have other kinds of beads at home, the only thing is, is you want to make sure that they're big enough for yarn or for this twine, whichever one you use to fit through. Um, if you only have small beads, you could also use sewing thread to do this, to make the little hanger at the top. Um, once you pull it all together, you could do that. So there's just numerous things you can do for this. I always like to give different suggestions in case you don't have these items on hand. And of course, you don't have to make them with the beads at all. They look pretty without them too. Um, so, and I'll show you when you go to do it, you don't necessarily have to have them. I just think it makes it look a lot prettier, okay? All right, so let's get into the tutorial that I've got. And I'm going to chain 51. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 8, 49, 50, and 51. Okay, so if for any reason you are a total beginner at crochet, in other words, you've never crocheted at all, 
um, and so you're not familiar with holding your hook or holding your yarn even, there's a video below for absolute beginners that I'll link in the description box and that may help you if you're, you know, if you don't even know how to crochet, okay? So in the second chain from the hook, so not this chain, so my hook is coming out right here. So not there, but in this next one right here, we're going to put three half double crochets. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm gonna go into my next space, pull up, go through all three, and do that again, and go through all three, and again, go through all three. So that's really what you're doing. You're doing three half double crochets in each stitch all the way down, okay? But again, I'm going to yarn over, I'm gonna go into my next stitch. I'm gonna pull up my yarn. That leaves three loops on the hook. I'm gonna go through all three loops. And again, yarn over, go into that same stitch, pull up, go through all three loops. Again, yarn over, go through the same stitch, pull up, go through all three loops. So as you do this, what's gonna happen is your work is going to start curling a lot because you're putting multiple stitches into each stitch, but that's exactly what you want it to do. You want it to curl up, okay? So I'm just kind of working a little bit quicker now and I'm just going into each stitch putting three half double crochets. And see, as you see, it's already starting to curl. And if you've ever wondered how they make the little octopus tentacles on these wonderful um, amigurami projects, the stuffed animals, this is how they do it. Putting multiple stitches in each stitch will cause it to curl. Also, this is a very forgiving pattern, so if you mess up and you miss one or, um, or you put too many, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Don't stop your project and start over again unless you're just uh, a perfectionist and you need to do that, then by all means do it. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, you're not going to be able to tell. Just of course try to get three in each one so that the curls will happen, but you don't need to stop the whole project if you forget or add here or there. Okay, so we're on our last stitch now. So we're gonna put, again, three in there. So yarn over, go into this last stitch. You can see it right there. And that's another thing about using a thicker yarn like the Red Heart. Um, you're gonna be able to see your stitches a lot better. And especially if you're a beginner or you're new to crochet, um, this, this works better. So anyways, go into that last stitch. One, two, and three. Half double crochets. This is what it looks like. Sometimes it'll be curled perfectly and sometimes it won't, but that's okay. We're gonna fix it so we can cut off and pull through and tighten. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that these are all going the same way, just like this. So you're just kind of turning them to go the way they should go.
And so now they're all going the right way, just like that. So that's what it should look like. And I'm going to go ahead and tie these off for the sake of this video. Um, if you're giving this as a gift or you want it to last a long time, you probably should work in these ends. But I'm just going to make a knot and cut it off just to make the video shorter. But if you wanted, like I said, if you want to sell these, give them away as gifts, you need to make sure that you work those in. Okay, so I'm going to cut off. Then I'm going to take my darning needle, okay, and I'm going to use my jute twine, and I'm going to put it onto my darning needle. I'm going to put quite a bit on, okay, so I'm going to just thread it right into there, just like that. Remember, again, you can use yarn if you don't have jute twine, and I'm cutting off probably about 23 inches. And I have this quilting board here, so I know exactly how many inches it is, but let's just say two feet, okay? And you're probably not gonna need that much, but you know, just to make sure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catch this, and this is the most important part of this project. I wanna catch the end here, right like this. And then I'm gonna go right through the middle, just right through with my sewing needle or your darning needle. And I'm gonna go right through the top, going through this right here as well. So I'm going right through the top, just like this. And then you're just gonna pull through. Just like that. And then you can arrange this. You can pull them out just a little bit, just like that. Okay. Then you can take off your darning needle and then you're simply going to tie this at the top, just like that. So I'm going to tie this, just like this. I'm not tying it real tight because I don't wanna pull it too close together. I wanna to have room to work it around if I need to, but I do want it tight enough to where it doesn't come undone like that. So I'm going to do it a little bit tighter, just like that and then you can move these around as needed, okay? And so then I'm going to take this extra pieces I have here at the top and I'm gonna cut them to make them even. And then I'm going to put these right back onto my darning needle. I'm gonna put both of these now onto my darning needle like this, okay? And now I'm gonna add my beads. So I'm just gonna use different color beads, these wooden beads, and I'm gonna pull down and I'm gonna do three of them. Okay. Just like that. Then I'm going to tie a knot close to the beads so it, that they do not slide up. Again, you don't have to do this. Again, you can use yarn. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to tie that knot just like that so they stay put. Then I'm gonna go up about, let's say one, two, three, three to four inches. And I'm going to tie a knot right here at the top. And this is how I'm gonna create my hanger for the ornament. Just like this, I'm gonna pull really tight. Then I'm gonna cut right there. And now I've got my little hanger. And then I'm just going to add a nice little, um, I'm gonna cut off about a foot, foot and a half. I'm gonna put this onto my darning needle and I'm gonna make a little bow for my wreath using this twine. Um, again, you can use yarn. Okay, and then I'm going to go right in between here and here, you can put it anywhere you want though, but this is where I'm gonna put mine. I'm gonna pull this through. Then I'm gonna pull up to make sure that it's even or close to even. And then I'm just going to simply tie a bow. Just like this, just like you were tying shoes. Okay, then I'm going to place this behind so it'll bring it down 
and place this behind. And then I'm gonna use these ends to make this bow as small as I want it or as large as I want it, okay? So I think right about there is good. You could leave those hanging past the wreath if you want to, just the way they are. But I'm gonna cut right here on the sides, just like that. And they lay perfectly. And that's how you make this really easy, beginner-friendly wreath. It's just so much fun. You can make a ton of them. They work up so quick. You can make like, I don't know, 20 in an hour or something probably. So um, yeah, just great fun. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. And if you need any help at all, don't hesitate to ask. I love helping people and I try to answer pretty much every question I get, you know, unless it's uh there's a lot of comments on a video. Sometimes they get they get lost, but usually, um, usually I try to get to everyone. So you can find me, of course, right here on YouTube. You can comment below. You can find me on um, Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. You can email me, and all of that is in the description box below. If you want to send me some pictures of your finished work, I love that, guys. That just makes my day. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that as well. So thanks again, guys. Happy holidays. I'll see you soon and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.